Well, no, no, it's just uh, th something that I thought because, uh, for example, I read some books uh, about phonetics uh, which were uh, written uh, 100 uh, years ago, for example, you know. So um, more than 100 years ago, there was no radio, there was no television, there was no um, podcast, no computers, you know. Um, so and you know very few people used to have you know the telephone the wired telephone you know and uh, so in that case the only way to share an information about sounds i mean vowel sounds and consonants uh, and how uh, consonants should be pronounced yeah. It, it was, was just to find to discover a method in order to describe those uh, the position of your mouth, your tongue, your lips, mm -hmm. uh, tension, you know, or relaxed position. Exactly. Just in order to give an idea to the to foreigners to about some some sounds that don't they they, they don't exist in their own language, you know. Okay. For example, the th sound, as in that or those. That sound doesn't exist in Italian, exactly. you know, or a, as in Adam, mm -hmm. or, you know, it doesn't exist. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Of course, they are different languages, and we are imitating them, yeah. Also, that those, uh, you know, sounds, as you said, like th or th, or sometimes a, uh, or some other stuff, maybe are not available in different languages, too, like in Turkish. Uh, they are not uh, available and people have hard time to learn and you know uh, how can I say try to to, to guess yeah per, yeah guess and pronounce it yeah yeah, yeah because first of all you need to to be aware of you know because our in our for example um, let me talk about me you know I I, I um, when I started to study English, you know, I always tried to simplify vowel English sounds by using Italian sounds, you know. So, for example, in in my, let me tell you this, an example, okay. Here in Italy, we pronounce, you know, the singular and the plural exactly with the same sound, men, men. And, uh, for example, let me give you another example. Bad bed, for example. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. And we say bad, bad. bad. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or the same also in, in Turkish, people have hard time, really hard time pronouncing and differentiating these two words, unfortunately. Yeah. And but I also myself to teach them. <laughs> feel and feel, you know. We say exactly feel, feel. Mm. Or, for example, this. Here in Italy, we say real, real. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, instead of will and wheel. Yeah, exactly. You no, know? so because because you know any in Italian language you have five vowels and seven vowel sounds, and in English we have five vowels at twelve vowel sound plus two semi vowels mm -hmm, mm -hmm. plus diphthongs. Yeah. <laughs> so that's insane. Yeah. It, yeah, it's insane. You know. Yeah. Well, of course, you know, uh, you know, at the beginning, everything is really difficult. But once you get used to it, once you have, uh, you know, uh, enough practice, you can easily deal with it. You can easily get used to it and uh, you can overcome those uh, imperfections and you can be better than yesterday. So uh, as you said, as an Italian, maybe a normal Italian citizen, Italian person uh, can have problem or hard, hard time differentiating the between man or men or feel or feel or bad or bad. But after practicing a lot, after, after focusing a lot and practicing a lot, you can overcome that as you did as an Italian, yes. You are not a native uh, speaker. You are not an English teacher. You are a, a sort of English uh, user, so to speak, and you over overcame that and you did it. And so yeah, but everyone, there is everyone a can do that. 
Yeah, yeah but there is a big difference. Uh, let me try to give you an additional detail. Sure. You said before that, you know, Italians can have a um, hard time, you know, to overcome, you know, this kind of pronunciation problems. Mm -hmm. But you know what? They, the truth is that they don't care at all. So they will say forever, for their own whole entire life, man, man, feel, feel, bad, bad, will, will, without any problems. And it doesn't matter if he practice one year or 30 years. After 30 years, they will pronounce those words exactly with the same wrong style. <laughs> uh, very, very nice and, you know, delicate explanation and what you said here is a is a sort of explanation that maybe mostly a teacher can recognize and i appreciate you maybe because because it comes it is related to your you know job because you're dealing with sound and you know yeah. pronunciation maybe it is because of uh, your curiosity which is really cool but you are totally right, right totally right yeah. because people are lazy Okay, yeah. and they don't want to. Uh, how can I say? Push themselves. That is the problem. Yeah. You know, no yeah. matter how many times as a teacher I correct uh, people's uh, uh, pronunciation. I mean, mis mistake pronunciation mistakes and errors. Uh, again, I mean, they cannot improve. They don't want to improve. You know, this yeah. is the problem. Yeah, yeah you know, the truth is that mm, I would say 99% of people or, mm, yeah, let's say people, people who use English, they definitely don't care about pronunciation and all of them will tell you the accent doesn't matter, doesn't matter at all, pronunciation, it's just bullshit mm, and that's all. So, uh, but, you know, let me say something about Italian, okay? There is this kind of paradox. On the one hand, Italians are aware that when they speak in English with their super strong, heavy Italian accent, they are, let me tell you, they are ridiculous. You <laughs> Why? Know? Why do you uh, think so? No, this is not what I think. I'm talking about the reality. The reality. You know? Okay, who yeah. defines the reality? Let's go into the philosophy then. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, for example, uh, who define, you know, the people who are listening, you know, for example, let's say there is an Italian and he starts to say something in English in front of a small audience and, uh, you know, just after 30 seconds, the audience will start to laugh. So, so you, if you people... have experienced this before, that is why you're sure. telling that. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, sure. And? Or maybe they don't laugh, but they they start to you know behind you know, you know, but they are laughing inside you know. Okay. 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 And, but the point is the same because you sound ridiculous because you know you you are you are doing something that you are you are not ready to do, mm -hmm. and you are awkward you know you're like a child that is not able to walk. Okay. You know. Okay. So, uh, so this is one, on the one hand, but on the other hand, Italians reject to learn, you know, to find a, a way to pronounce sounds that in English sounds that don't uh, exist in Italian language. For example, the first and the only one is the th. You know, they, if you say to an Italian to put, uh, you know, his tongue, you know, between his uh, teeth, in order to pr uh, pronounce the th. He he would prefer to kill you yeah, instead of you doing know that. instead of mm -hmm. doing that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He prefers he prefers to die. I see. But he will never ever put his tongue out for no reason because because he thinks it's ridiculous. So on the one hand, if they speak with the Italian accent, they are ridiculous, mm -hmm. and but they reject to learn the real English because they think it's ridiculous. So that's the reason why they will have the same wrong accent forever. Cool, fantastic observation. Actually, I like that. Actually, this I mean this concept, this mentality goes on almost everywhere even of course i mean because i live in istanbul turkey uh, this mentality goes in goes on in turkey among turkish people too 
you know, no matter how many times I correct their pronunciation, I mean, they don't, they reject, as you said. Sure. But of course, sure. of course, the amount of rejection is not uh, that much that you said, I mean, comparing to Italians. But uh, of course, I, I can rarely see some students, some language learners who really want to improve their pronunciation. Like, as you said, like TH is the most uh, the crucial uh, thing in pronunciation. But yeah, people uh, feel awkward, as you said. People uh, think that they are so, how can I say, uh, ridiculous, as you said. Yeah. And mm -hmm. yeah, they don't care for that. So I just, I just leave them. I just, I just um, try to uh, avoid uh, correcting those stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but that's the reason why I wanted to know to be different. And that's that's the reason why I wanted to um, I wanted to start to to study phonetics, both British and American um, pronunciation, just in order to, to to check. Okay, if they do it, I can do it. You know, I have two lips, I have my teeth, I have my tongue, I have my face, I have my vocal apparatus, I have my throat. Why why can I do it? You know, so I'm a human. Yeah. Well, I so, think it all comes with practice. The more you practice, the better. Like, you just got to keep watching a lot of movies. That's how you acquire an accent. I mean, speaking of... Cool. Yeah, you but know, if, you, if, you practice, if you practice for, for 20 years with the same style, mm -hmm. after 20 years, you will be the same. Exactly. You know, I have, exactly. I, I have many neighbors here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, many neighbors here in my, you know, my city and my my surrounding area and they are from, from many places you know portugal they are portuguese speaker spanish speaker blah 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 yeah. so they have been living here for 20 years and they have exactly the same accent they they had the first day we, we they, they came here i see but I, they practice in the language every single day because i think it here. depends also on your aptitude like some people have got a knack to catching some phrases and maybe they just have a good ear for um just music in general and for different sounds so i think yeah like i mean just depends on, on a person first of all and pick two um it's also dependent upon your age uh it's really contingent upon your age if you're like a six-year-old child you're more likely to uh, shed your accent rather quickly i mean by saying shed i mean um that you'll get a brand new accent just in, in the blink of an eye but if you're being like a, I don't know, a 20 year old grown up, in this case, it'll be more complicated for you to change yeah. at least something because your patterns are way too embedded and ingrained in your mindset. Sure. I mean, your mother tongue ones. Yeah, but still, I think it is possible. Like, I don't know, if you want to work on your pronunciation, you just got to keep watching a lot of movies. Um, that's really beneficial. Like, you may also watch a lot of videos on tongue placement uh, or something along those lines, but it's not that helpful. Like, I mean, it all comes with uh, watching just loads of movies and practicing as much as possible. Well, if you watch a lot of movies, you will improve your listening skills. This is what I think. And you will mm, be not perfect. Really. <laughs> you uh, will like, be perfect. Unless, I, here's the deal. Um, if, yeah, of course, like your listening skills should be um, up to snuff. You know, yeah. Pronunciation is something about something related to your mouth. Open your mouth and make a sound. If you don't know, if you don't have any idea how you should... Uh, make how you can create that sound you will never do it you will never say it because like, it's just a super specific uh, it's a matter of the super specific position you know a combination of your tongue tens tension relaxation lips and protrude right. and rounding and so if you don't know you will never do it even okay, if you watch um, you know case in point, 100 movies yeah uh, a case in point i've been watching a lot of movies uh, for this whole year uh, really intensively on a daily basis. Um, not only have I been watching them, but I would say uh, I was trying to listen to them really meticulously. And I never ever worked on my, on my pronunciation specifically. I just like, you know, the way I speak right now, I got it from the movies. Like, well, I never... Actually, sorry for interrupt. Uh, I thought Anna uh, or Anna, I don't know how to pronounce it uh, in your mother tongue, but I thought that you were a sort of you know, a native speaker, and you you're so awesome. 
in terms of pronunciation as well as accent. I thought that you were American. Uh, Rosanna. <laughs> I mean, what is your name? Sorry. Oh, oh Christina. Christina. Okay. I mean, I thought that you were Anna. Okay. Anyway, uh, so where are you from? Ukraine. Ukraine. <laughs> but thank you. you. I'm profusely grateful. Fantastic. Fantastic. Really, you improve your accent in a really, really uh, surprising way. Cool. Cool. Keep it up. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, so, so is yours. It's really, really splendid. splendid. Yeah. yeah, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> yeah. Guys, your, your English is fabulous. Cool. Thank you very much. Yes, sure. go ahead. Um, yeah, yeah so, so is yours, Alex. Alex. It's so also, like, great. great. <laughs> and, um, yeah, yeah, I was also bedazzled by your English, English, Alex. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alex. Sorry, uh, I'm just, uh, I was reading some messages, so I'm sorry. Um, okay, what, no you... problem, yeah. So, uh, Christina, as you said, right? Yeah, yeah. you got it. So, uh, of, uh, I think your level should be, like, advanced level. Am I yeah, correct? like, because so I know some complicated grammar structures and versions, so mm -hmm. I think it's probably advanced. <laughs> cool. How long have you been uh, learning and, you know, practicing? Uh, for a solid three years. Like, three years ago, I did know grammar, but I was not really able to string at least a few words together. Uh -huh. So I managed to get to this uh, milestone, if I can put it this way, mm -hmm. in solid three years. Like, I've been, but I've been doing this really intensively. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just want to emphasize this. So I like that. You. And what about you? Uh, if I got it right, you're an English teacher. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so what about your experience? Do you want to share it? What kind of experience do you want to hear? What do you mean by experience? Like, um, what exactly got you into teaching? Why, why have you decided to become a teacher to choose this path in your life? Cool. Very uh, deep question, of course, you know. I studied English language and literature, uh, so normally I have to I have to deal with something else, not rather than teaching. But unfortunately, no one uh, I mean in in Middle East or maybe in Europe or maybe in the whole world uh, do not take uh, literature for granted. Okay, that is one of the reasons uh, that. I, 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 I wanted to become a teacher and I did it. I, I taught for a couple of students really at the beginning and I think it was success, very successful because I don't say that they said that and step by step I, I, I felt that yeah maybe I can do that as a sort of uh, profession and then I continued and yeah, right now, you know, I have been teaching English for like 12 years, still I am improving, still I am learning, and uh, it is like uh, unlimited. Yeah. And what is your yeah. job? What is your occupation? Sounds well. At this point in time, I'm unemployed, but next year, if everything goes swimmingly, I may apply for university. Um, I'm not going to say that it's on the cards, like totally, I haven't, you know, quite made my mind up uh, at this point in time yeah but I just I'm not sure about my uh, major uh, I'm experiencing this kind of thing that is called you know uh, existential angst <laughs> so to say yeah I'm not sure about my true vocation that's why I wanted to take some more time so that I would like you know just look into it and keep my options open for a while <laughs> yeah but so that I would keep it short and to the point I am unemployed at this point in time Okay. Yeah. I see. I see. Uh, and what I about you, Alex? I hope you can uh, get a job as soon as possible. Uh, you yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Actually, I was. Um. I. Um. You know, I live in a rather small city. I mean, or either a big town. Actually, it's a bone of contention, but I was just wrap it. Um. So I was proposed to work as an English teacher down here, but I don't have any kind of education, uh, nor do I know how you should like, you know, teach others. Yeah, exactly. Um. And by the way, I do not really possess uh, the patience of sane. If you understand what I'm getting at, like I've got a pretty much, you know, I'm. Uh, 
a foul tempered person like I, i've got a really uh quick fuse and i'm really quick tempered so i think that i'm gonna just you know uh just snap someone's head off uh when someone doesn't really understand me um yeah right off the bat so yeah i would say i'm pretty much you know um not that tolerant when it comes to teaching so yeah it's a big obstacle exactly like i would even say a uh, herald yeah in my way absolutely it is a really uh, challenging job especially being an english teacher of course really difficult yeah exactly especially uh when you do not really have a reasonable explanation for some things and you're just gonna say oh it's gotta like be like this because it sounds right so yeah it's weird you know yeah because unless you're a native speaker that you do not have such a you know uh prerogative so to say like you, you gotta be able to explain especially if you work as a teacher yeah exactly you know being a native speaker is not the case actually you know you have to as you said as you mentioned earlier you need to know the uh, techniques and tactics and strategies how to make uh, a sort of topic uh, simple for students to understand you need to simplify the the topic the lesson that is what teachers are actually doing or yeah doing. and i also think that you know if you simplify constantly it may track your level um down ultimately so i think that's why uh, it's just another um you know point that uh, i would like to make because like it's true you know i noticed that a lot of you know teachers uh once they pick up beginners uh their level starts um going downhill like you, know, you just you may feel that yeah their level is not like you know that, that they are kind of not at the top of their game to put it this way yeah so that's why you should be careful also observation you're right but of course i would say those teachers are lazy i mean uh i, I mean they, they have to they have to improve themselves they have to push themselves too they should not you know stay uh, intact or you know calm I mean, everybody uh, needs to actually uh, improve himself or herself in any uh, matter. I mean, in any aspect or angle. So yeah, but of course you are you are totally right that majority of teachers, especially English teachers, who are dealing with lower levels, stay or remain at that specific level. Yeah, nice observation. Very clever observation. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think maybe it's not even mine, but yeah, well, I did notice it myself, but also like, you know, I heard it for some astute people because before I didn't really uh, pay attention. But then like I heard some, you know, stories like that and I did start to listen to, you know, teacher speech. And uh, as I got it, I usually teachers are prone to simplifying. Uh, because purely and simply they are used to simplifying for students and you know it just becomes like it's really a habit forming thing mm -hmm. and once you start simplifying over time it'll become like uh, a deep-seated habit of yours and it'll be like extremely difficult to shake it off exactly yeah, yeah definitely right definitely correct yeah I mean uh, unfortunately this is as you said a sort of obstacle and uh, barrier for and a challenging barrier uh, to eliminate for those people, for those teachers. Yeah, cool. Okay, apart from listening uh, or watching, you know, TV shows as well as movies, as you said earlier, which was really uh, nice, that I always uh, recommend students to do. Uh, what else you are doing? I mean, dealing with English. I mean, how do what what sort of material or uh, thing that basically you're uh, studying or I mean, what is um, yeah so information? actually I've got a really uh, useful book of mine uh, it's for vocabulary because unfortunately in the movies um, you do not like you know uh, have a lot of eloquent vocabulary coming your way so you mm -hmm. should be you know pretty much um, I would say just you gotta have like a source of vocabulary especially if you want to yeah sound uh give or take eloquent so in my case i've got like one book that is called uh oxford um word skills 
it's really beneficial because at times if you want to get to know some really specific vocabulary like military stuff or uh, some like you know small niceties like uh, paper clips thumbtacks barbed wire something you would never ever even uh, get to know about just because you know it's it's difficult like to get to know about things like that it's it's way too specific and usually it's not being mentioned uh, in the movies like it's really at a premium yeah so this book is really beneficial especially for c1 slash c2 learners uh, yeah and it's a great source of vocabulary i can even send you a picture just one second of course so I can definitely say that uh, Christina uh, has a knack for language, especially English. Oh, thank you. Do you know this, this expression? Of course. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I said it before. By the way. Cool, cool, fantastic. You have a knack for language or languages, which means the knack here means, you know, talent. Yeah, I know, as, uh, like uh, aptitude, like a neck, she's got a neck to remembering faces, exactly. like it's just, you know, your ability, your aptitude, your faculty for something. Yeah, fantastic, cool, great, very good. Thank you, yeah, your English is also splendid, yeah. Just one second, I'll find the book, because I can actually... Take your time, take your time, yeah. I uh, see. Um... Okay, I'll just go uh, on one website. I'll take a screenshot and I'll send it to you. Sure, possible. Take your time. We are here. Yeah. Well, I want. I wish to talk, but my muscles are straining. Actually, I've been talking continuously for more than six hours. Uh -huh. Would like to listen. I understand. So you have been talking to uh, other people, right? You know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they wish to i mean they want me to judge their speaking ability they're preparing for IELTS. Uh -huh. are you an english they teacher want... or what no i'm not an english teacher i'm but just a student you have some experience uh, about ielts then no okay <laughs> i see they think i'm good at it so okay yeah good at it of course So yeah, go ahead with your conversation. I would oh, of course. prefer Actually, to listen. Yeah, normally I go live here. I join this platform to uh, to receive uh, questions from from people, from language learners, or let's say language users. Uh, and if I have an answer, I would definitely share my answer, my experience, as uh, some of you guys may know. But apart from that, when we uh, come across with uh, some great topics, sometimes we can talk, but obviously uh, people uh, have a tremendous amount of questions that they are uh, asking, and I try to answer them. Well, I've been learning English since I was a child. Mm -hmm. I've been doing it since I was three, and my mom say, mom's an English teacher as well, oh, okay. so I don't face any kind of difficulty in english cool. i'm just looking forward to help people who wish to work in english mm -hmm. cool where are you from Most probably i'm from india india great great cool and what is your occupation uh, i'm a student pursuing computer science oh fantastic fantastic which year first year freshman freshman oh my god so freshman, sophomore, what else? Junior and senior, right? Yeah. Freshman, sophomore, junior and senior. Senior. Yep. Fantastic. Okay. Yeah, uh, Christina, I I I received this picture. Oxford word word skills. Yeah, I know this. Picture. Yeah, it's yeah. it's like mad beneficial. It's got a lot of um words you would never ever get to know about. Um, yeah unless it was for this book so yeah it's it's like it's really beneficial i uh, because i got to know about words like okay for instance i didn't really know military vocabulary so i didn't know about i was not like words like um uh, whatever was connected to military things even like uh, it used to have some tenuous connection i would be pretty much in the dark uh, so right now i know words like conscription like if you're being conscripted into the army it means that uh, if you, especially if you're being like a man, you're being just uh, cold, 
mm-hmm. uh, so to say, to serve mm-hmm. uh, into the military forces. Yeah, and a lot of wars like this. So it's it's really good for um, not only is it good for uh, C1 learners, but also it's got a lot of like C2 vocabulary. Um, and some of the words are not even, um, you know, like some some of the words are pretty much obscure to native speakers uh, because they're like really of a high level. It's if you're like a top tier learner. I see. I see. So, yeah. It's a really, really beneficial book. You have a real, uh, of course, knack as well as a passion and enthusiasm towards English, uh, so to speak, which is really cool. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's my nice passion. Thing. It's like my prime hobby, I would say. I can see. Yeah. I can see. I can see. Yeah. yeah. And so do you, by the way, because you're explaining stuff to people. So I think um, it demands, you know, some guts probably and also commitment. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we so. can say that. But of course, yeah, uh, this is in our blood to share and you know to be helpful, you know, like that. Teachers have have uh, different psychology. They they are, they are. I mean, normally they are he- helpful, of course, any kind of teacher. Uh, but yeah, it requires uh, a lot of passion and enthusiasm, so to speak. Okay, I have a question for other people in the room. Like, you have joined the room to learn something. Why don't you come up with some kind of doubts? Yeah, good question. Doubts? Yeah. What, what, what do you mean? Well, you mean like you have joined this room in order. Yeah, go ahead, ask the teacher the questions. Um, I, well, I just arrived and I don't know what you're talking about. Um, okay, sorry. But. A lot of people have joined in a long I time saw, ago. I saw there's a discussion going on in, in the chat box, and I think they're talking about the importance of using books or, you know, studying a language formally. Um, so I don't know if it's the same you guys are talking about, or are you talking about yeah. something else? Yeah, we're talking about the same thing, mate. Okay. So what's your, um, I mean, do you think it's necessary to rely on books? and studying a language formally or or do you think you can learn it naturally well it's up to your comfort zone mate you could use internet you could read books whatever is of your comfort you just use it well actually my muscles are straining up and talking for a long time so we just have conversation with other people in the room i'll prefer to listen okay well i I guess, yeah, you can take either approach and, you know, some people like one way, others like a natural approach. I would say that I find it easier to learn without grammar books because it just turns grammar into math. It becomes hard, it becomes tedious. I think it's very discouraging for a lot of people. I mean, I I know many people who want to learn English and and they say, you know, I I have to study now and and they, you know, they take out the grammar book and doesn't feel motivated. Whereas yeah. when you take a more natural approach, you probably, you know, you watch TV shows or, um, I don't know, you listen to podcasts. It's more... Or BBC. Yeah. I mean, if you do something of your interest at the same time you're learning English, I think you're going to feel more motivation to actually learn and practice every day. Whereas yeah, it's, exactly. Yeah, it's I can movie. relate this. Like, you gotta draw motivation from some kind of sources. Probably, I would say grammar books for some people. It may be like a milestone and just um, um like a point to it that they did this, that, and the other. Because like some people cannot really, they really need this um you know tangible results some uh, they do not see any kind of results like they don't feel it you know but once you have like a book and in time when you feel it just down in the dumps because you cannot really sense your results so in this case you may just resort to your book and see that oh uh, i've covered this material and that yeah maybe like um doing it with something so i don't know like i mean i'm just speculating but for some people it does work this way like they just gotta have like you know books that are divided into levels that's why for some people it's like uh uh you know a life and death matter to know their level so that they would see that they're doing like something you know yeah so bad 
I, I think, know, I think it, it also depends on what your purpose is. If you just want to learn the language and to be able to speak and understand people, then you can take the natural approach. Now, if you're into linguistics or if you're a teacher or you're an interpreter, then it might be helpful to formalize your grammar knowledge and, and to be able to explain it. So it depends on, yeah, what your purpose is with the language. Are you an English teacher, sir? No, no. But you're definitely um, a native speaker. Which part of the United States are you from? I'm not, I'm not a native either. Uh, Come on, just, you uh, just be kidding me. <laughs> no, no. I, um, I, I learned the language like uh, everybody else. I try to teach English once to a child. I mean, it was you very have, difficult. You have really, uh, how can I say, uh, realistic intonation that a native speaker, basically an American, has. Really, congratulations. Where are you from? I'm really curious to know about it. Uh, I'm from Colombia, and uh, thank, thank you. you. You're, you're wow. making me blush Fantastic. right now. Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> Great. Yeah, you're exaggerating. Oh, is that? No. I'm saying it to the teacher. You're exaggerating. You said you, oh. you said to him you were make, making a blush. I said to him you were exaggerating. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think teaching is very hard. Teaching is very challenging, especially when it comes to young people and children. Because, I mean, an adult would probably think of reasons to learn, but when it comes to a child, it's difficult to capture their attention and to convince them they have to learn. And I, I actually taught a child uh, a long time ago, and it was really difficult because he just didn't want to pay attention to me. So I don't have the ability to raise interest in like people to, to teach them. Um, so I think, you know, I would just leave that for the, for the experts and for the ones who know how to do so. And I think, well, you're an English teacher, right? So that's what it's like. So yeah. just don't mind with my accent or pronunciation. I feel dizzy. It's four AM in the morning and here. I absolutely am like a drunk person. <laughs> no, that is okay. Don't worry about it. So uh do, do you teach uh, in a school or, or an institute or children? Yeah, what do you no not not children? Um, I'm sorry guys, I gotta get going uh, because it's real late down here. <laughs> yeah, kind of lost the track of time. But then you have a good one. Um uh, thank you, you very much for this yeah, joyous conversation. Yeah, hope to see you around. Okay, yeah, bye. Take care. Take care. Take care of yourself. Bye, and thanks for stopping by. Yeah, yeah thank I, you okay actually yeah long time ago i used to teach uh to uh young learners juniors mm -hmm. but not anymore uh, i prefer adults obviously and of course i teach in uh, language courses institutes yeah language uh, schools actually and institutes okay all right <laughs> great Oh, so, did did I mention I've been learning English since I was three? Oh wow! No, you didn't. Well, I wasn't here if you mentioned it. Actually, yeah, I yeah, heard that's, about that's it. Cool. Yeah, go ahead. Do you want to talk about it? As you said, you're no, so no, no. exhausted I'm, I'm, <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, fatigue right now. Yeah. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Maybe next time you can talk about it. I think you said it was senses. drunk. My understanding is you're drunk. Is that what you said? I feel like I'm drunk because I've been oh, awake mean, for a it. long time. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have uh, Musharraf here, of course. Yeah, please, do you want to talk? Yes, I mean, yeah, you know, just let me speak to the audience over here. Come forward and have a conversation. It's no point in listening to someone in the first place, because if you wish to improve yourself in the conversation, just come forward and have a conversation. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is what I always say. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is because I, I as I always say, because you'll turn out to be a good listener, not a good speaker. Yeah, because, you know, we have uh, obviously four skills. I hate repeating, but I have to. Uh, we have four, four skills like uh, receptive skills, as you, may, as you know, like uh, reading and listening. And we have productive skills like, like speaking and writing. I would call these product, productive skills as 
practical skills and uh, which means that which require uh, requires a lot of uh, how can I say effort and time and practice so obviously as you said of course uh, if you really want to improve your speaking ability as a sort of uh, practical skill you definitely need to speak it out absolutely absolutely there is no other choice there is no other you know magic okay uh, hello everyone this is Snoopy Ignacio I want to say something why I hear the same thing again that you can only get better at speaking by speaking when there is evi evidence scientific evidence mm -hmm. research that proves that uh, when students get more and more um, audible comprehensible input their speaking gets better too their vocabulary gets better their grammar gets better so generally our output skills are the result of our input skills so the more you read the more you listen your pronunciation your grammar your confidence your fluency will get better so I hear again and again don't be there just listening because if you just listen you're not going to learn to speak no, that actually, is that is not true there is evidence absolutely well, evidence. Think, think it's, it's, uh, are you yeah are not you to 100 percent mate not to 100 percent yes there are scientific results that only by reading and writing and listening you can improve your speaking ability but not 200 percent what do you mean not to a hundred percent what that exactly means i think it really improves mostly if you're listening to native speakers if you're listening to a bunch of students i'm not sure if you're gonna make a you know as much progress you know but, so. but there's there's one thing you will improve by listening to learners which is your listening because by listening to difficult accents you're going to train your ear to understand what's difficult but uh, yeah i do agree it's better to listen to natives if you want to improve pronunciation or you know, grammar as well, because they are the experts by nature, right? Um, yeah, and, and as far as speaking, um, I feel like there's different stages when it comes to learning languages. And I would say we should focus mostly on listening when we start with the language. And once once enough time has passed and you're already familiar with the sounds of that language, you can start speaking. So my advice would be don't start talking from the first day because you're not familiar with the sounds of that language yet. So listen for a few months and then you start talking. That That's the way I would, I would approach, uh, you know, um, yeah. Okay. And I was, I wanted to be very specific because this, these topics are never ending. It's so complicated and fascinating. So my, I want to be I wanted to be very very specific that I'm kind of tired of hearing people say again and again if you don't speak you won't get better at it what's the evidence they have to to say that there is no evidence there is evidence for the right for right the opposite thing so if you don't know the facts, if you don't know the research, don't bring dogmas or things like that if you're not so sure, because I can't show you uh, magazines, articles, books, reference to other linguists, where, where it's, it's a fact that um, we don't, um, there, there is even a, a term, yeah. the silent period, the silent period, which is natural for, um, for most people, children, adults, and something is happening in the brain during the silent period when kids are listening to their parents every day, but they don't speak yet. So do you think that... Which is exactly I... what I'm but talking about. But what if kids didn't speak at all? Do you think they would still be able to speak? Yeah, at some I mean, point how you have do to... You, how do you like practice what you learn from listening? Sorry, I, I'm confused. I'm, I was saying something, and now I don't understand what you said to me. But go ahead. What you are saying is more interesting than what I was trying to say. Go ahead. No, I think it's, it's talking no, about it's what okay, you're saying. It's okay. Actually, it's late for me, so I have to go. Good luck with your learning. Bye. <laughs> what? 
What the hell, man? Wow. What the fuck is wrong with this guy? Trigger, mad? trigger the argument and walk away. <laughs> trigger the argument and walk away. Actually, oh, man. You know, listen. That's so uh, bad. How can you practice? Like, you're listening. Like, listen, you're going to use. You know, uh, he said that there are a lot of evidences that. Okay, if there is any evidence, please share it with us so so, so that we can, well, of it, course, learn. No, no, no problem with the evidence, mate. But no problem with the evidence. Like he was talking. Did he sound like a native speaker? Did he sound like British? Did he sound like American? No. That, that, that's now, so true. That's the skill he lacks. He lacks the so, accent. Yeah, I'm, I'm very skeptical when I hear someone. You know, I know the best way to learn English. And yet the way they talk is not precisely the most impressive way. You know, their level. So I become skeptical about whatever they're going to, uh, you know, teach me or teach us. So I don't know. Well, that that was extremely weird. I mean, he just, he just <laughs> well, actually what we were mentioning had to do with what he was talking about. So I don't know why he got so mad out of nowhere. But well, of course, you know, I mean, possible. okay, no problem, no problem that you can learn, learn without. Uh, you know, coming forward and having a conversation, but I think he, the way he was speaking, he didn't sound like British, so that he no, didn't didn't work on his like, accent. Without judging him, it didn't sound like he really knew the key to learning English. You know, so yeah, I think he is more of a lazy student. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I've spoken. Uh, I've you know, I talked to him before, and I feel like. I already had situations like this where he got mad or he was arguing about something, and I don't know. There, there might be something about him. I'm just, I'm just trying to encourage other people to come forward. Even if you make mistake, you will learn from it. Right. That's the basic thing I want to say. No. Well, this guy comes up with some kind of research that only by listening you learn a lot. Okay. Try to sound like British. Us, Try to sound told, like British next day. He left us hanging. He was like, oh, I got, you know, compelling evidence that yeah, you, you don't have to speak to, to get better. And we were waiting for that, but he didn't do it. And, uh, and in the end, he chose to apply his own technique and decided not to speak and just left. Yep. Was weird. What's your opinion on this, teacher? Actually, you know, as I always say, there's no uh, magic for speaking, every single person has his or her own method, so to speak. Uh, maybe, I mean, no one can be so definite and so sure about a, an exact technique, an exact method, which, uh, I mean, if you basically apply it, you would 100% you would, uh, get the uh, reasonable results. I, I, I think no one can claim that. Uh, but it is possible, of course, uh, because, you know, listening and speaking uh, are so related and connected to each other, of course, because uh, the, the first thing that all of us did uh, when we were so young was listening, of course. But uh, again, I have to say that people need to speak, it, speak out. People sh should come out of their comfort zone speak again and again again and again and they have to be corrected if they have any specific mis grammatical mistake you know pronunciation mistake or etc etc and uh as i always say the speaking is the is art you know that is why we say for example that person uh, is a great public speaker why uh, because maybe he or she uh, is an artist. I mean, they have a they have a, sp a specific talent, or I don't know. They practiced it a lot. <clears throat> but I never forget a quote from from one of my professors in university. He used to say that if you want to be a good speaker, you have to be a good listener. Yeah, but again, you need to uh, practice it. You need to speak it out. This is what I believe, actually. Yeah, same thing. I mean, if you are a child, you learn a lot of words from your parents, but you have to practice them to pronounce them properly so that your parents can understand the word next time. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. They have to uh, see that error, that mistake, so that we can actually uh, 
correct it. Otherwise, improve why? Yeah, improve it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is so weird and absurd. All of a sudden, you know, after 10 years of just listening and no speaking, then out of nowhere, you start to talk like a native speaker. It sounds so absurd. <laughs> yeah. Well, it is not my goal to sound like native speaker, and neither I wish to. But a lot of people say to me, I don't sound like Indian. I don't care about it, and they ask me about how do I develop this accent. Well, I have a simple formula. I tell to them, if you are loud, clear, and fluent, it's more than enough. Yeah, exactly. That is it. You know, you don't, you don't have to be, you don't have to sound like a native speaker. Uh, I don't understand, you know, of course, as I said earlier, I asked this question from uh, teachers around the world and I shared them on my YouTube channel, obviously, and basically, <clears throat> sorry, basically the teachers are from uh, America, Canada, you know, I mean, all of them are, most of them are, you know, native speakers and they are so surprised receiving this question and they say we don't understand why people are so obsessed with having a, a, a specific accent, uh, yeah, that is so abs absurd, actually. You know, let's say, okay, for example, uh, Alex is, is a pure American, but he is actually Italian. So what is the reason? What is the point in being or, you know, sounding like, uh, for example, an uh, American or British, right? So this is the case. As you said, uh, the only thing that we have to focus and concentrate uh, is to be to be able to to be understood by others, to be able to convey our messages. Yeah, the accent. Everybody has an accent. You know, English is not uh, you know uh, narrows down uh, with you know American or British. We have Canadian accent, Australian accent. You know, Scottish, Irish. All of these, even in America, there are a lot of uh, different accents and dialects. Even if you go to a village in, in your own country, you might face with some interesting accents and uh, everybody is a native speaker. So that is not the case. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was lucky enough to have conversation with a British person on my first day on this platform. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, that's, that's the thing he said to me. What, what did he say? It's like your accent doesn't matter. Your exactly. accent is your own identity. If you try to imitate someone, you will lose your identity. Absolutely. And there's no point. And one thing he said to me is that you could sound like me when you're speaking English, but I could, I could never sound like you when you're speaking your native language. And I have no desire to sound like you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. You know, and I, you, know you get these identity. words from the native speaker in the first place. Sorry, come again? You know, you, you get these words from the native speaker in the first place, yet exactly. the whole world is obsessed said, with the accent. Obsessed with the accent, yeah. I don't know why. Uh, maybe maybe, maybe there can be a, a very cliche reason that I think, I, I guess, people uh, don't want to be an outsider. Understand? Mm -hmm. Maybe. Imagine that you... You have an act. I have an accent. We have an accent. So we go to America, and we want to. How can I say, a culture in American culture, and we want to be a part of that American culture. Imagine that, for example. And once we start to talk, if we have an accent, obviously we have. Uh, then maybe uh, those native speakers would would uh, recognize, would notice our accent. And then they said, okay, you are an, uh, an outsider, so yeah, you don't belong to us. Maybe, maybe I am just trying to... Uh, well, I've seen, I've seen a lot of people who went to America and spending five, six years in there, they kind of developed the accent. Exactly. But again, we cannot fully eliminate our, uh, you know, accent. Every single person has an accent. Yeah, you, you have the original flaw from your yeah. native language. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, we use language as a tool to communicate. That is it. Uh, as long as I, people can understand me, uh, so I'm a lucky person. 
as as a as a language user i'm not talking talking uh, as a as a teacher as a language user if you yeah. are, if you can understand me if i can understand you so that we can say that the language uh, flows the the, com the the communication is successful yeah that is it yep absolutely man absolutely <laughs> Do you have any specific uh, topic to talk or specific question related to English or I don't know study plan? Any kind of study well, I, th I think you didn't check out the chat box. I had I written something. Know. I couldn't. I'm so tired. Yeah, well, my application was like accepted in UK without IELTS because I had good academic score at English. Mm -hmm. You're so lucky then. Yeah, yeah, I'm lucky, <laughs> but I can't afford the money over there. Oh. Four million in my currency oh my God. before you scholarship. Well, I got the scholarship of three thousand pounds, but for it's for the academics, not for the cost of living. Cost of living goes by four million in my currency. I see. I see. I see. Okay. Yeah, that is challenging. So. Yeah, and as of this situation, I think it will be pretty difficult for me to find a part-time job over there. Mm -hmm. oh, good luck. I don't know what to say. Yeah. Good luck. I hope everything will be all right and you will be happy. Well, the only reason I'm looking out of India for education is the challenge in curriculum, which I don't get in here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's pretty much the symbol. It is the system here is a mug up system. Just, you know, grab those question answers, learn it, write it down on a piece of paper and you're done. I see. <laughs> Possible. Possible. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're right. But of course, uh, uh, you know, and I'm learning computer science. There's no point in learn, you know, mugging up any any kind of programming stuff because mm -hmm. you, you have to do it practically. Exactly. Exactly. You know, there's a point. There's a quote. I don't know who said that first, but I really like that. Uh, someone said, "We we go to university to to learn, right? So we learn to earn." Right, so we uh, we learn something, uh, so that we can earn from that from that specific skill or knowledge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah. you have to think maybe twice before yep. considering before choosing anything, so that uh, be so careful because you are, sure. you are you are investing a lot of time uh, apart from and money. money. Of course, apart from money, because money, if you lose money. There is an opportunity to gain it back. Gain it back. <clears throat> but <clears throat> sorry, but if you lose time, unfortunately, no one can help you to take it back. Yeah, it's sad. It's sad. Yeah. Like time, time and tide, don't, don't wait, wait for any mad. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. So I I want to 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 say that uh, consider what we are going to do and try to uh, how can I say talk to a lot of people. Uh, and uh, mm -hmm. get get their ideas about what you want to do. I'm not just talking about university. I mean, generally, if you want to do uh, something uh, special or delicate, so to speak, I think if you consult with someone, uh, obviously an expert in that field, it would be really great. Well, I was kind of expecting you to give me advice. Really? Uh, uh, you know, how can I uh, help you? Because your your field of study is related to computers, so I, uh, I can... You know, applying know. abroad or something. Sorry? Applying abroad or something, you could help me with that. Mm, actually, no, this is not my field. Uh, I have uh, limited knowledge and information about it, but of course, there are some agencies. You know, Google, you know, trust Google. <laughs> Trust Google and Google it and do a uh, huge and deep research on Google and then you would definitely find uh, your desired, you know, answer. Okay, so um, uh, would you mind if I ask you a question like where are you from? I am originally from Iran, but I live in Turkey. I, uh, right now I reside in Istanbul. I am Iranian. Okay, mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. I love Prince of Persia. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The land of per uh, Persia, yeah.
and okay as you said you're you're so lucky that your your your, your mom uh, is an English teacher and you mm -hmm. started learning English uh, when you were like three years old yeah and I was raised in an English medium school oh, fantastic and what about from the right, beginning. what about uh, I mean nowadays uh, do you study them study English actually or you just so what do you do for your English nothing nothing I've nothing. never worked on it nothing. not even on my accent but people are pretty much surprised with my accent <laughs> <laughs> I see okay yeah so but of course you're listening right <laughs> you yeah listen, you watch yeah maybe this is like i don't know maybe we can call it as passive mm -hmm. uh, learning or what whatever yeah yep. cool cool what time is it in over there in india it, it is 4 15 a.m p.m which one a.m a.m oh so i think you are like uh Night out. Two, three, three hours and a half ahead of us, yeah. I think. Yep. Yeah, I see. Right now it is like 1 uh, 13 a.m. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Cool. Excellent. Nice to meet you. I followed you actually. I followed a couple of people. And uh, yeah, you can, as I, as I always say, you can find me on YouTube. Uh, or on Instagram under the same title like teacher may Sam you can contact me and uh, yeah I really appreciate people uh, joining listening talking discussing this is wonderful really wonderful I learned something maybe I can uh, say something useful to people maybe I hope and yep. this is what uh, it is <laughs> I mean we have to be helpful so yeah if you have yeah, any it's specific like, like Mahatma Gandhi used to say in my country <laughs> yeah I know okay, uh, what, what if you find yourself if you lose yourself in the service of others mm, fantastic fantastic I like that yeah he was a great man he was a great man yeah we know him Cool. So if you have any specific question, specific suggestion, criticism, I don't know, idea, I am all ears. Otherwise, I want to just leave because I am really exhausted. But of course, I am all ears. If you want, you can uh, talk about it. Very, very you are a great teacher. So, you are a great teacher. No, come on. Of course not. I am trying to help and uh, you know we are like of course we are no normal people trying to be normal and we have some limited knowledge and you know we are sharing these this knowledge and experience with people this is what i do actually yeah, I'm, I'm, well I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave and i let other people i will i would like to encourage other people to have their doubts cleared Okay. with this beautiful person mm -hmm. bye you. guys take, take care, care of yourself well, uh, sorry was that your first time joining my my lectures my uh, room or yeah yeah a friend of mine a turkish friend of mine invited me over here uh -huh. who was that Oguzan. Uh -huh. okay but he's yeah, not but here right now. in fact i have to you know force that person to come up and have a conversation because he's real good with the texting stuff but when it comes to having a conversation, he's fishing for the words, he's thinking, he's translating. I see. Yeah, this is a major problem of uh, almost every single person in Turkey because of education system, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, uh, have Bye. a good time. Take care. And take care of yourself. Thanks for stopping by. Hope to yep. see you and talk to you soon. Yeah. Have a good time. Yeah. Okay, guys, uh, it was a really long conversation here. Thank you for, for uh, being here, uh, listening and participating, you know, actively, passively. But if you have any specific question, please ask it very shortly and quickly. Otherwise, I have to leave.